Good evening. Due to the COVID-19 emergency, tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live stream video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variants and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number will also be posted on the screen in the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instruction to join the video conferencing. You will be asked for your name and number and the number of the item that you wish to address. And, for, and then the chair of the committee, when the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is time for you to speak. The applicant or agent will then be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for the presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record. And any submission beyond the five minutes will be then at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also, must also state their full name and address for the record and a maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions will be directed to the chair and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be then at the discretion of the committee. The applicant and agent will then be provided with five minutes to respond to comments made by interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has concerns found in staff report, particularly with the proposed conditions, at that time, the opportunity will be to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for any application must provide a written request, preferably through their secretary treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order for you to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Land Tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variants and 15 days for consent applications to the applicant, agent, or any other person that has filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Land Tribunal, and the last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received, within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received the copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in the hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people who are participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing on oakville.ca. Thank you. Uh, we have no regrets this evening. Madam Secretary, do I have any requests for a deferral or withdrawal of applications? And if there's anyone else in the audience who would like to request a deferral or withdraw an application, please raise your hand and you'll be admitted into the video conference. Can we do declarations, please? Oh, yes, the declarations. Do I have declarations for procuring interests? I see none. Thank you. Okay, I don't show anybody raising their hand, so I don't have any uh, previous knowledge of anybody requesting a deferral. So um, okay. if anybody wants a deferral, they can raise their hand now. If not, uh, I guess the uh, chair will move on to the first item. Okay, thank you. And we have no consent applications. Our first item of this evening is CAV 020 of 2022. Oh, wow. That's uh, quite a coincidence for the day as well. Um, okay, um, having said that, again, CAV 020 of 2022 at 460 Copeland Court. Who do we have representing this application this evening? If 
you'd like to speak to this matter, please call 905-815-6095. And we will uh, take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Good evening. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Parveen Sandhu. I am the owner um, of 460 Copeland Court, Oakville, Ontario, L6J4B9. Um, an application, as you said, CAV 020-2022. Um, I'm here before you today to request one minor variance for RFA. I do have a short presentation um, that I will just go through. So if you go to the next slide. All right. Um, this is the proposed site plan for our home. We are requesting only one variance and that is for residential floor area. We are requesting an RFA of 31.26%, whereas the bylaw permits 29% for our property. This equates to approximately a difference of 35.92 square meters. Next slide, please. Uh, we believe our home design is compatible with the build form of the newer build in the area. Our plan has also received support from planning services. We did take their feedback uh, and, and designed a home that we believe reduced the overall massing and scale. Um, on the front elevation, of our proposed dwelling, you will see that the garage and the second floor above it are um, recessed and set back to create additional negative space and to soften the overall massing of the house from the street. And on the rear elevation of our proposed dwelling, you will note that it has lowered um, uh, roof lines for the family room and one story elements to once again, reduce the overall massing and scale. Um, slide four, please. Our home is marked in red on this map. Copeland Court is surrounded by streets such as Chartwell Road and Lindbrook Road and the area consists of many new builds um, of various sizes and designs. Um, and I would like to note that I have received support from my neighbors, my neighbors um, directly behind me, which is uh, the Chartwell House Daycare Center, as well as my neighbor um, to the north, we're out of town, but have sent me support either by email or text. Uh, my neighbor to the south has provided me with uh, written support and my other neighbors on and off my court um, do uh, know about this meeting and uh, my intentions and have sent me their best wishes. We do find our application meets the four tests of planning act. We also believe our request for an increase in RFA is minor in nature. I live with my husband at 460 Copeland Court with our three children um, and we love where we live and we want to build a new home that aligns with our area as well as our family needs. And that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Ms. Sandhu. Are there any questions at this time or items of clarification? Uh, Ms. Murray, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was just wondering, I'm just going through my paperwork. I was wondering if we had any of those letters that were submitted or could be submitted? I'm um, no. sure I can. Sorry, no, none of them were submitted to the to to the secretary treasurer prior to the meeting. Okay, so I'm I don't, just I, don't I just want I, I just want to make sure I didn't I didn't miss any. No, you did not miss any. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I, I didn't send them in, but I do have them. You can send them into the secretary treasurer and we'll have, we'll have them on record for you. Well, unless they're presented at the meeting, I, I, they can't be put into the record because I don't have them at the, at, as this meeting is, is going on. Okay, that's fine. Um, do we have anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this matter? Um, I see no one at this time. Okay, who would like to make a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, um, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of this variance. 
Also having taken into consideration and account the comments presented by the applicant this evening. And thank you for the presentation. It was very good. Um, and we, we do appreciate hearing that you've you've chatted with your neighbors and 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 had some outreach. That's always a great thing to do when when you have a, an undertaking such as this. Noting that there were no written um, objections at this time and noting that there is nobody on the line um, to object uh, at this time. Um, I'm satisfied that the minor variance uh, application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for the variance subject to the following conditions, that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated um, 1206-21, and elevations drawing dated 1109-21, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mary. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Ms. Sindhu. Thank you. Application CAV 021 of 2022 at 494 Wildwood Drive. Again, it's CAV 021 of 2022 at 494 Wildwood Drive. If there's anyone who'd like to speak to the matter, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to provide you with further instructions to join the conference call. Good evening, Mr. Martinez. Good evening, Madam Chair and fellow crew members. My name is Juan Martinez and I'm a planner at Design Plan Services located at 900 East Mall, Toronto. Hello, go ahead. You have a presentation? I do, Madam Chair. Um, through you, Madam Chair and committee members, we have been retained by the property owner of 494 Wildwood Drive to present this Committee of Adjustment application and the associated variances in front of you tonight. Um, the application consists of a redevelopment of the existing residential dwelling into a new two-story single detached uh, dwelling with an integral garage. The application, um, the application there's two associated variances to the uh, to the bylaw 2014-014 um, in regards to the proposed in regards to the proposed lot coverage and proposed lot floor area ratio. Um, I would like to note to the committee that this application has been circulated. Um, to uh, various city city departments and no concerns has been raised by any department. Um, in fact, planning services have provided justification in support of their uh, requested variances for this application and are of the opinion that this uh, application satisfies the test for approval under the Planning Act as stated in their staff report. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, before getting into the variances, I would like to clarify to the committee that the rendering, which was originally submitted to the committee, which you see right now in my presentation, is not the correct draw, drawing and does not reflect the proposed dwelling and variances. Um, I would like to, uh, to ask um, planning staff to scroll to pages 13 and 14 of my presentation, uh, which demonstrates the correct rendering of the proposed dwelling and associated variances. Yep. So the design, as you can see, uh, proposes a second story, which is set back at the east side um, and has architectural features to reduce the massing um, appearance of the dwelling. Please note that planning services were aware of the correct rendering while they were preparing their staff report, um, as, they noted that, as they noted this in their staff report. And just uh, also I'd like to know that the, no, the variances are not affected by by this uh, correct um, rendering as the site plan and four plan have remained uh, the same. So through you, Madam Chair, in regards to the, which is, the, um, which is a maximum permitted residential floor area of 41% of the lot area, this proposal has a uh, floor area ratio that is 44.4%, uh, which is an increase of 3.4% percent of the maximum permitted floor area ratio or 20 square meters which will spread over two floors there has been various approvals similar to this application and can be seen at uh, 485 trillion drive which was approved at 45.28 percent 
drive approved at 45.08% and 510 Trillium drive approved at 44.93. Um, there has been uh, various other um, similar approvals, but I will not get uh, th through all of them in this in this um, uh, presentation. So through you, um, Madam Chair, is my opinion that the variance relating to the floor area ratio, which is 40 square meters over, sorry, 23 square meters over the requirements is minor and meets the general intent of the bylaw. Further, as the subject properties in the dash zero suffix, the floor area of the private garage. So if you can, I can ask planning staff to scroll up to the site plan. Um, yeah, the, the, um, the private garage was included in the calculation. Um, and if you were to remove it, the residential floor area of the living space of the dwelling will be, it's 39.1% of the area, which will be compliant uh, with the bylaw. I would like to note that this neighborhood generally consists of older bungalows, To newer and slightly larger two-story dwellings as proposed by this application. There are no variances pertaining to the overall building height and the two adjacent properties um, of the subject property are does not create a structure that is an overdevelopment of the subject property and fits in well with the approvals um, through you Madam Chair in regards to variance number two the permitted coverage of the lot and the proposed dwelling has a coverage of 35.9%. Again, this is a 0.9% uh, increase over the permitted or 6.6 .6 square meters, which in my opinion is imperceivable from the naked eye. The intent of the coverage requirement is to ensure that the lot has enough open space to adequately deal with drainage and store water runoff, as well as to prevent nuisance in regards to building sizes and building setbacks. In this regard, the proposal complies with all the front, uh, front yard, side yard, and rear yard setback requirements. This demonstrates that this variance is minor and meets the general intent and purpose of the bylaw. So based on this uh, provided justification, I am of the opinion that this proposal fits in, with, fits in both with the existing and planned context of this neighborhood. Uh, it's consistent with the redevelopment trends of the broader neighborhood. And for these reasons, uh, through you, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, I believe that uh, the request, uh, that the requested variances are minor in nature and meet the four test under section 45.1 of the Planning Act. And I could answer any questions uh, at this time. Very well, thank you, Mr. Martinez. Um, any questions or comments or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Uh, if there's anyone in the audience who's raised their hand or on standing by to speak to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer. Um, there's no one at this time. Okay, if there are no questions and there's no one, go ahead, Mr. Flemington, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> having uh, reviewed the applicant's uh, application and as well as the town's written staff report, which I do note that is in favor of, also noting that there were no uh, members of the community that were in opposition or in support of the application, uh, I would like to uh, move a motion that uh, the application be approved as applied for, finding that it does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. And I would like to include the uh, following conditions. Uh, sorry, I just lost those. Sorry. Of course, this is the fun of technology. <clears throat> that the uh, dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated uh, uh, December 17, 2021. 
And secondly, our standard condition that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision if a building permit has not been issued. Very well, thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Application CAV 022 of 2022, 411 Inglehart Street South. Again, CAV 22 of 2022, 411 Inglehart Street South. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is- Mr. Tomas, go ahead. My name is Tom Sproul. I'm the agent on behalf of Paul and Eric Command, the owners of 411 Inglehart Street South. You have submitted a presentation. It's coming up right now. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we're requesting, uh, well, the application is for seven variances. Uh, there is quite a bit of opposition against planners. So I'd like to go over point by point why we feel some of them should be supported. We could get the next uh, slide, please. The first variance is the window well encroachment into the front yard. Staff has support that. We thank the staff for their support of variance number one. Next slide, please. The second variance is the window well encroachment into the side yard setback. Uh, we reviewed staff's comments. We understand why they uh, came up with those comments. So we're willing to delete this variance completely. Next slide, please. Third variance has to do with residential floor area ratio. Allowed on this lot is 43%. We're proposing 43.7%. The staff has not supported uh, this variance. Rationale for their decisions are three points. If you can please go to the next slide. Can I get the next slide, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so what, the, sorry, go, yeah. So their first point was uh, to prevent the dwelling from mass and scale that appears larger than the dwelling in the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, massing is derived from floor area, building height, and side yard setbacks. The floor area increase of 0.7% is what we're requesting. Side yard setbacks conforms with the zoning bylaw and building height conforms to the zoning bylaw. Residents in this low density residential zoning has supported RSI increase of much greater than 1%. Staff indicated that the neighborhood consists of two story dwellings that are original to the area and two stories that are newly constructed in line with the design my clients have proposed. Next slide, please. The second point was seeking a variance, a small increase in the floor area ratio. Uh, lot sizes, sorry, small lot sizes as a denominator make relatively large changes in percentages. RSI 0.7 requested is 43%, uh, which is allowed versus the 43.7. That's where we get the 0.7%. Uh, the requested floor area translates into an increase of 3.81 square meters, which is 41.01 feet squared. Uh, next slide, please. The third point in regards to variance three, combined with the other var variances, support of this variance is not appropriate given a redesign of the dwelling is required. Wish to be transparent and show all the variance requested as a whole rather than in several parts, uh, home and garage together in rather than separate C of A hearings for each one. Hence all variances are being requested together tonight. The home design has been created with an accessible main floor with large access doors, hallways, washrooms, and turning radius in other living space to accommodate mobile devices to owner. Staff notation of redesign being required is felt to be an extreme statement for a 0.7 RSI when we feel we kept the design characteristics, height, 
architectural character and proposed material in line with the surrounding homes. Next slide, please. In conclusion to variance three, we disagree with the massing comments made by planning staff where increasing of 0.7% for RSI is minimal, but results in a functional home for a disabled person requiring accessibility accommodation. The design of the home and material is in line with the neighborhood. Presidents in the area for granting RSI increases of more than 1% and neighbors at 407 and 417 have supported the design characteristics and variances requested in writing with no opposite, uh, objections received from others in the notice area. Those two letters also were uploaded and should be with the uh, staff. Uh, next slide, please. The fourth variance was lot coverage. Uh, was unsupported by the staff. Uh, they, made, they made four uh, rationales for it. The first one has to do with massing. I just described or talked about massing. So we'll jump right into number two. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, point number two, ensure that adequate open space is available on a lot for outdoor amenity areas and stormwater infiltration. Small lot sizes as a denominator make relative large changes in percentages. Variances is requesting increase in 3.65%. The house is 22.6%. The covered back porch is 8.9% and the garage is 7.1%. Overall, the increase for asking is 19.87 square meters. Outdoor many space covered back porch affords outdoor enjoyment at the rear yard, making it accessible in all weathers. Even surface manner optimized for mobile assistant devices in line with what staff has described as single story features such as front cover porch. In this case, a back cover porch slash outdoor living area. We recognize that everyone enjoys and participate in their enjoyment of the outdoors uniquely. Next slide, please. The second point for variance four, staff made a comment, ensure that adequate open space is available on a lot for outdoor amenity area and stormwater infiltration. Concerns related to adequate drainage and stormwater management on the property. Stormwater management infiltration is still possible with lot coverage and drainage opportunities that may be put in place, such as French drain, et cetera. City of Oakville has a DESP department with professional engineers to ensure drainage meets all city requirements. This can and will be addressed by DESP, as well as the surveying engineers with regarding to landscaping and lot grade requirements prior to any permits being issued. Each tops and downspouts on dwelling and garage will lead to front and rear yard for drainage. Next slide, please. Uh, in conclusion to variance four, lot coverage increase request is 3.85% is largely due to an outdoor covered back porch area so that new uh, so that homeowners can enjoy shoulder seasons in the outdoors in a wheelchair accessible and protected manner for an outdoor living room covered porch area also serves to cover the stairs to the basement in the backyard which leads to a proposed legal duplex providing some protection from the elements for this access in an area unserviced for smaller rental options uh, neighbors 407 and 417 have supported the design characteristics and variance requested in writing with no objection received from others in the notice area. I'd like to make a comment that if this is uh, really an issue, then we are okay to remove the deck on, sorry, the covered uh, deck, which would then make us compliant with this uh, variance. Next slide, please. Variance number five was unsupported uh, by the city. City had three rationale, uh, three ra rationale for staff decision provided. The number one was front yard is measured from the front yard, front property line to the front porch of the dwelling. Proposed dwelling will be closer to the front lot line than the adjacent dwellings and will not be uniform with the setbacks of the rest of the dwellings on the street. Intent to ensure a relatively uniform setback along the street. Next slide, please. So for variance five, requesting front yard setback to the porch is 7.02 meters, 7.52 to the house, relative to the neighbors with line of intersecting indicating blue arrows. So if we look at the sketch here, the two blue arrows point to uh, the 7.02 setback that we're requesting, which is 
the porch. Uh, the house to the right, 407, their front yard setback is 7.52. Ours, 411, we're asking for 7.02. The neighbors to the left, 417, they're, they're at for the porch at 7.46. And the neighbors to the left of that at 421 is 6.89. Only a small amount of the dwellings is more forward than the immediate adjacent neighbors with covered porch at 407 and uncovered porch at 417 as indicated in the bold black lines. Next uh, slide, please. Front yard setback. Proposed site orientation of the dwelling is altered from existing dwelling with front of dwelling angled to the side lot lines rather than parallel to the street. Current 10.66 meters to the porch, not the stairs, allowed increase to 9.66. Reduction of 2.46 request for 7.02 meters. Previous calculation did not include the stairs of the front porch of the existing dilapidated house. Next slide, please. Um, so these, this, in conclusion to variance five, the proposed dwelling does not come in, does not come as close to the street as 421, which was the 6.89. And as such, the request setback does follow the intent of the regulations being a relatively uniform setback along the street. With the setback uh, requested lying between the houses close to the street and 421 and the neighbors adjacent. Uh, we question in the review of the setbacks of the surrounding homes was thorough and precise. A comment about the street by the staff suggests an inattention to detail saying there are no sidewalks along Inglehart Street South. This is factually incorrect. Please view the site plan and we will see there is a sidewalk in front of the subject property of 411 site plan. For that we would have to look at the site plan but maybe I'll finish my presentation and then we can look at the site plan if need be. Uh, the last point of this would be that the neighbors of 407 and 417 have support design characteristics and variance requests in writing with no objections received from others in the notice area. Next slide, please. Uh, so now is variant six. Variant six and variant seven have to do with the, the accessory building, which is the garage in our case in the rear yard. Um, the setback required for the rear yard is 0 0.6, we're requesting 0 0.28. Uh, the staff did not support it. The rationale for staff decision provided was one, allow for adequate separation between accessory buildings, two, allow for adequate space for drainage, three, uh, adjacent properties abutting the property detached garage also have accessory building in close proximity to the property lines, uh, four, concern for adequate drainage to the subject property and adverse impacts of adjacent properties. Next slide, please. Number seven is also in regards to the side yard setbacks of the accessory building. And this time it is the interior side yard. Also 0.6 is required. We're asking for 0.3. Staff didn't support it for the same four reasons. Next slide, please. Uh, variant six and seven. So the existing garage, which is denotated in the blue with the X, Rear yard setback is 0 0.01 over, sitting on the rear neighbor's property over the property line. Requested garage rear setback is minimum 0.28, the green arrow, increasing in distance from the rear lot line into the yard orange uh, arrow. In the middle of the proposed garage, uh, the setback is 0.58, and at the yellow line, at the yellow arrow, it's 0.83. Proposed rear garage sitting is significantly improved from existing garage and would increase the separation from the adjacent rear lot and increase space for drainage compared to existing. Next slide, please. Uh, existing garage, again, the noise in blue, this time side setback is 0.05 immediately adjacent to the neighboring property line. Requested garage side setback is minimal 0.3 green arrow, uh, representing an increase over existing of 0.25 meters in distance from the side lot line into the yard. 
proposed red garage, red outline uh, seating is significantly improved from existing garage and would increase the separation from the adjacent side lot and increase space for drainage compared to existing. Next slide, please. Uh, flat roof design of the garage with a slant towards the front in conjunction with the perimeter curb encourages precipitation to drain towards the front of the garage, collect into a gutter, and then lead through a downspout to the interior of the rear yard, further improving the drainage and mitigation, mitigation the staff concern of impact of drainage towards the bordering neighbors. The support of the design and location has been expressed in writing by the neighbors most affected by this proposed city, Laura and Patrick Burke at 417 Inglehart Street South. Next slide, please. Uh, in conclusion to variant six and seven, the proposed sitting of the accessory building is significantly improved from the existing garage, which currently crosses rear and abuts side property line. The increased separation proposed compared to existing structure should in fact improve the drainage situation. Design of the garage with the no rear and side windows respectively, sorry, respect privacy of the neighbors and front slanting roof, roof line with drainage proposed to the interior rear yard is also an improvement from the existing garage as it stands. Uh, the, the next point, neighbors at 470 have supported the design and characteristics and variances requests in writing and would experience the greatest impact and there has been no written objection received from others in the nose area at, as of time of circulation of comments. Sorry, next, uh, next uh, slide please. Folsom drainage assessment by the DESP by professional engineers in conjunction with land and site drainage surveys would be required with demands met prior to any permit being issued to build. And as such, concerns about drainage negatively affecting subject and adjacent properties should be addressed by them rather than planners, given the expertise of the engineers. Neighbors at 417 have supported design characteristics and variances. Uh, there have been no written objections received from others in the notice area at the time of circulation or comment. Next uh, slide, please. In summary, a complete request has been submitted rather than parting out garage and house in separate CFA hearing with multiple requests for minor variances being expressed at one time. We feel that the composite of these requests uh, has been deemed to be a concern for planning department despite our transparency. The reason we say this is because rather than doing a CFA application strictly for the house and then for the garage, we would have never had so many variances. And we feel that because we tried to do it in one shot, maybe what scared the planners was the seven variances. The front yard setback request is in line with the neighborhood. The proposed accessory building location is significantly improved over existing garage and careful Roof design has incorporated for improved drainage with less than impact to the neighbors. Next slide, please. Um, in, this is now to, to end off uh, all the points. Yard and lot drainage water management will be uh, completed by DESP professional engineers before permits are obtained. Requested RSI increase of 0.7 is minor and has been accepted in the past for RL3-0 according to previous meetings of C of A. Requested lot coverage increase of 3.65 have also been accepted in the past for RL3 according to previous uh, minutes of C of A. Support has been expressed in writing by both main side yard neighbors at 407 and 417 Inglehart Street South and no concerns about the request variance and proposed site plan to our knowledge. We believe the requested minor variances do meet the four tests and the proposed dwelling accessory building will be a complement to the neighborhood. Next slide, please. I thank you for the opportunity to present this information on behalf of my clients and respectively disagree with several of the arguments put forward by the staff and the planning office as detailed in the slides. I'm willing to take uh, any questions. Hey, thank you, Mr. Gorel. I commend you on the thoroughness of your presentation and all the details. Let me see if um, any of the members have any questions or items of clarification. Mr. Murray, go ahead, start us off. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, Madam Chair, to town staff. Um, one of the things in the staff comments was it's a unique situation where adjacent properties abutting the proposed detached garage also have accessory buildings in close proximity to the to the property lines. As a result, staff concerns regarding adequate drainage on the subject property. I'm wondering if we have the information at hand, Madam Chair, that would share with us whether or not the abutting properties have variances in place for those accessory dwellings because uh, we have an applicant coming to, to us for a variance i'm wondering if the adjacent properties also have variances in place if historically drainage has been an issue uh, yeah, thank you. yeah. Can I, you, can, you can answer can that. actually it's the, the question is for the planner so just give us a moment mr Goro. Thank you. Um, so through you, Madam Chair, there's the application at, on the adjacent property, which is also being heard today. Um, I don't believe that there were, I need to confirm whether there was variances on the adjacent properties. I, I believe that's kind of historical um, buildings in the, at the rear there in terms of the um, garage that was on that property. And whenever we take a look at an application, we're looking at the whole picture in terms of what's adjacent to the property, what's on the property as it stands and what's coming. And so both applications that are side by side being considered in conjunction with each other in, in terms of our review and, and the implications. And um, in, in evaluating the garage, I spoke with engineering staff at the town and they mentioned that, you know, anytime that we reduce the setbacks, you know, there could be concern. And at this point in time, with the information that was presented to us, we could not confirm whether there could be a concern or not. And so that's that was expressed in the report that um, there was concern about whether um, there would be drainage issues as a result of the all these um, accessory buildings being in such close proximity. So that's what led to those comments. If that, if, please let me know if you have any additional questions related to that. Um, th thank you that for, for that. Um, just one additional comment. Comment I. I note that our presenter today um, cites the support of 17, but for the record, may I also note that uh, the neighbor at 417 also has an application for which 411 is supporting. So um, it, it appears there is a little quid pro quo. So I'm gonna take that support with a grain of salt. And I'd like that noted. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Murray. I, I have a follow-up question on, to piggyback on Ms. Murray's question. So have there been drainage issues in the past that to your knowledge? That's my first part of the question. And the second part is given that the, this application is being assessed with a, an adjacent property as well, are you not confident that some of these issues that are potentially may arise? And we've seen that complaint for, uh, for drainage and stormwater management um, from many developers um, that the DS DSP will in fact um, manage and take care of those issues? Um, so I think at this point, I'm unaware of whether there has been drainage issues on the property with the existing buildings, but they are proposing new buildings that have greater area um, and different kind of setbacks in design. At this point, um, if, the, if the committee are wanting to um, you know, make a decision with some support to this application, I'd at least ask that there be a, some type of condition that any approval would be a subject to um, DESP approval. Because I think at this point, sometimes in this situation, we'd be approving something that we already know that could have a huge be a problem for drainage and if we are approving that at this time we want to make sure that they it's it's dependent on whether de the drainage does work on the property because i think that's the concern is that um, often we have properties come in and uh, we know that it can we can make it work already you know through what's going to happen in that next process but at this point um, there is concern whether it is possible to work appropriately so one once the applicant did go through that DESP process, we would have those drainage plans, see the grading and drainage, and there is a possibility that it could work and they could prove that to us and show um, engineering staff that that would work out well. Um, but at this point in time, we don't have those plans, so we don't know and, and we didn't have the comfort of approving it at this point in time as the application stands. 
That's fair enough. And then my last question has to do with the second variance, which the uh, applicant has offered to delete. And if yes. that has any bearing uh, on the uh, rendered plans that we have and what your thoughts are on, on that as well. Yeah, so staff definitely welcome the deletion of variance number two and it's and for everyone's um, everyone on the same page is the one that the window well at the side yard that was going to be taking up all of the side yard and would there wouldn't be room for adequate drainage along there or access. So that's where staff's concerns were. So if they were to delete that, that would um, improve staff's view of the pro of the proposal for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see Ms. Murray's hand up. Do you have a follow up? And Mr. Talowski as well. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Yeah, quick, quick follow up. So when we're talking about drainage and the relation um, to a follow up and subsequent variance for 417, I note that staff feels that a variance might have been missed in that application related to accessory building coverage. And so I would note, uh, and I'd like comment from staff on this, it would be exceptionally important on this application um, to note um, DESP um, approval. Uh, does, is that appropriate? Uh, yes, that would be correct. I would um, provide that recommendation for both of applications that DES, DE, the, the development engineering site plan approval to, sub, to the satisfaction of the director of engineering be in place um, as part of uh, prior to I just don't yeah. want to muddy up the waters. I think we need to deal with each application on its yeah. own merits. So that, yeah, so that's a separate, yeah. So, so let's keep them as separate and let not, let's not discuss it in discuss them together in conjunction for any matter as we stand right now. So, uh, moving on from that, can Mr. Talowski had some questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll just comment on that last issue i'm not sure we need any reference if it were to be approved because that uh, site plan development engineering site plan will happen anyway but uh, i have two questions for the applicant um, it's really conditions five six or variances five six and seven that i'm struggling with with respect to the variances for the garage um you know, I, I'm having difficulty when you've got a requirement that all stormwater has to be maintained on site, um, how you can deal with that in a one foot side yard, and similarly, how you deal with maintenance uh, to the building. But I, my question is, why are you seeking these variances? They don't seem necessary in that it looks like you have room to uh, meet the by law. And my second question is with respect to the front yard setback. Um, again, I'm not sure that it's necessary for the extent that you're seeking. And I'm having difficulty with I know you took us through in your presentation that the front yards aligned on with the neighboring properties, but you're proposing a very a bold two-story flat face as opposed to the houses on the rest of the street or the houses on each side which have some form of porch or story and a half in the front single story which is very different than what you're proposing and i'm concerned that it's similar to staff there um, that you're trying to bring this too far out in front of the existing houses and not and at the same time, you know, trying to mitigate the impact of that variance by having a two-story face. I can speak now? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Gorel. This, uh, this oh. question was for you. No problem. Um, so the reason for the garage is uh, it's basically there's a garage there right now. Uh, it's in a good position, and they just want to put a garage back in the same area. Um, I know we're not to talk about uh, 417 right now, but I am the applicant on that project as well, which I will be presenting afterwards. But the agreement was that both neighbors wanted to rebuild their garages at the same time to uh, alleviate uh, affecting the others' day-to-day uh, day-to-day uh, day-to-day work 
and do it at the same time. So also the builder will be building them at the same time. We also made sure that there'll be slab on grade, so we won't be digging four feet in the ground. Uh, in regards to the, um, the control of the drain, there is a perimeter of curb. We are collecting all the, all the water to go to the front. The ESP does have to approve it, and uh, they are the ones that wouldn't even give us a permit if any water's, water was to spill on the adjacent neighbor because the city specifies that all water must be maintained on the property, and we're more than willing to work with city and put in whatever measures we need to to ensure that all water is kept on every, uh, on every neighbor's property. Uh, in regards to the house, um, Yes, it is a two-story dwelling. I, I agree with you. However, we didn't trigger uh, height. We didn't trigger site variance or side yard setbacks. So we did keep it minimal. And the house is a modest 2,550 square feet. So it's not a monster home by any means. We only want to push it as forward as much as we could that we thought was okay, not being the furthest house in, in front of all the homes, was to make that rear yard a little bit bigger for our for my clients so that they can enjoy their backyard and use it because it is small to start with. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further questions or comments or items of clarification? Okay. Um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has there anyone uh, raised their hand uh, seeking to speak to this application? Not at this time. If they do want, would like to speak, I need to see you raise your hand and then I can move you into the meeting. I don't do not see anybody at this time. Okay, very well. Then we can take the matter into committee. Who would like to start us off? Mr. Talowski, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I find myself wishing the applicant had sought a deferral tonight because I don't think the applicant's that far off with this application. Um, however, um, you, you've heard my comments. I, I don't believe there's a need or a justification or is it desirable to approve new one foot setbacks um, for new construction. And I think the applicant could have done a much better job in trying to mitigate the request for a front yard setback. I don't find the combination of the reduced front yard and the design of the house with the two story uh, facade to be desirable. Um, the remainder of the variances, um, intend to agree with the applicant they're not that large but uh, in terms of the house and don't see that exactly the same as staff um, also note that with the coverage the applicant sort of suggested well if that's an issue we could take the covered porch off but this isn't the place to be redesigning and recalculating what the, the variances would be so um Madam Chair, unfortunately, I think this could have been worked out with staff, um, but the applicant chose to proceed. Um, I don't believe the variances in their totality are desirable or appropriate or meet the test of the Planning Act. So, Madam Chair, I'm going to move that the application be denied. Okay, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. The recommendation is to deny the application. Um, all those in support? Okay. All those opposed? Okay. I'm sorry. Your application has been denied. And you'll have to see the secretary treasurer if you seek to reapply. Okay. Application CAV. Twenty twenty three, sorry, twenty three of twenty twenty two at one eighty William Street. Again, the application is CAV zero two three of twenty twenty two at one eighty William Street. Who 
who um, it's Mr. Outright, right? Yes, correct. It's Mr. Outred. Is he online or do you see him as Secretary Treasurer? You're muted. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. No problem, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, once again, Bill Outrid, um, for the agents for 180 William Street. My office address is 2140 Winston Park Drive, Oakville, Ontario. And we're just here for uh, a minor variance related to a, uh, a small cabana uh, at the subject property. We're requesting one variance lock coverage of 33.3% whereas 25% is, uh, is required. Uh, this is to once again facilitate a cabana of 14.86 square meters. Uh, it's important to note that um, the site prior to the Liverpool Oakville plan uh, had approval for a coverage variance back in 2014, 31.7%, uh, whereas 25% uh, was permitted. Uh, that was for the house. It was supported at the time in 2014. Um, the owners are wanting to uh, go forward with the pool and a small cabana, as I said. So that is the reason why the, the particular variance here is uh, is large, even though the building that we're adding in the back is uh, relatively small. Um, the committee has the drawings. It's a rel once again a relatively uh, minimal uh, size building, uh, three meters of height. Um, it's not. Uh, imposing on any of the uh, the neighbors um, it's shown on the plan there so so once again i feel that it's a, it is a minor variance it is the only variance we're requesting and as i said just as a reminder we do have uh, the three immediate neighbors uh, that have signed off that they have no concerns pertaining to it and uh, planning uh, is supporting the the variance um, so once again i believe it's a, a relatively minor item here and meets the four tests i'd be happy happy to answer any questions Are there any questions of Mr. Outer at the time? Yeah, I see none. Um, if there's no one here to speak to this application, we can take the matter into committee. I do not see anyone at this time. Very well. well go ahead, Mr. Harcastle. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including um, the written staff report and having heard Mr. Otrid's presentation with respect to this matter, I'm satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the act. The um, uh, coverage uh, increase is relatively minor and, and uh, largely in place and not exacerbated significantly by, um, by the uh, proposed uh, um, uh, cabana structure. And as such, I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to two conditions. Uh, those being that the uh, accessory building be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated November 29th, 2021, and that the approval will expire within two years of the, uh, the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued. I would note that there were three letters of support provided um, uh, in support of the application. Thank you, Mr. Harcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Great, thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, uh, application CAV 25 of 2022 at 1163 Rosethorn Road. Again, application 025 of 2022 at 1163 Rosethorn Road. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions at that time. Um, we have Mr. Zhang. 
You're muted. If you could just unmute yourself, we can see you. It's in the top section of oh, your Yeah, Zoom. okay. Good evening, uh, committee members. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my file number is CVA25-2022. So this variation request, yeah, this uh, request to permit the maximum uh, encroachment of uh, 0 0.64 meters into the minimum Frankrich yard for uncovered access tiers below grade. So I'm the owner of the, this property, the address is 1163 Lothong Road, Oakville, Ontario, Epsis M, 1H5. My name is Quan Zhang. Next, please. Okay, so I wanted to post the sign here so all the neighbors here uh, can see it. So wonder, so what's happening right now? Next, please. Yes, yeah, so, so that's the design for the work. So it's a, just a sign entrance to my basement. So it's a small uh, project. So just uh, the stairs uh, goes from my side yard to below grade to my basement. Next, please. Okay, so that's it, that's the picture. That's where these stairs will be in this orange frame. So that the fence will stay and that's invisible from the street. So yeah, so that's just inside my yard. Next, please. Okay, why I do this? So there's a few reasons. Uh, I can make my basement more livable and functional. So because right now my basement is vacant, I cannot do anything right now. So the stairs to my basement are narrow with a 90 degree turn. Uh, it is hard to move through the big furniture stuff, uh, the big stuff like sofa, mattress, you know, uh, even the freezer to my basement. And even my son, Jason, grows up now and he needs more space, his own space with friends and just for the purpose of the space of privacy. So yeah, they can, they can have more fun uh, and my noises in the down basement. Sometimes I need to work at home so, so they can you know, enjoy their time in the basement. Uh, yeah, the more, another reason is that for the, I have more freedom and convenience to access my basement. So yeah, that's it. That's the key reason. Next, please. Yeah, see now here, that's my, you know, the stairs, narrow stairs. So you, you can see it's very narrow, right? So especially the corner, right? The, the 90 degree turn. So it's hard to move through the stuff from, from the main level to the basement. So right now they see the picture that is vacant. So my plan is like in my door on the right side of the wall. Uh, yeah, so can can get more access from there. Next please. Okay, so uh, how long will it take? So normally it's like to, uh, up to three to four weeks according to the contractor. Uh, and yeah, so all the these are uh, done. So just like they are, they are done by the uh, professional license contractor. Uh, so all the work and procedures will be compliant with the city by law and regulations from the right beginning, joining and to completion. Next please. Yeah, so already uh, talked to my, my neighbors. I mean, I know the door and told, try to talk to everyone. So yeah, most of them, I met them and just like, uh, I think three or four neighbors didn't you know, open the door, maybe they're not at home. So I tried to inform them what's going on right now and, and explain my plan. So uh, most, most of them uh, are fine, are okay with that after you know, uh, knowing my, my plan. So there are no issue with that. Okay, so next, please. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, Mr. Zhang. Are there any questions of Mr. Zhang at this time? Or items of clarification? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. There is one letter that came in from the neighbors. Um, uh, Dr. James Mahoney had some concerns 
Um, uh, Mr. Zhang, have you seen that letter? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I, if you have it in front of you, they had some questions. Um, I'm wondering if this would be an opportunity to, if you wanted to address some of their, their questions that are, that are in that letter. Okay, so yeah, I can see the question A, B, C, right? In the red. Yeah. So, would this lead to the construction of an additional driveway? No. To, to do with the driveway? No. Uh, B, would there be parking for additional tenants' car permitted or the E, the three? No, it's not for tenants, it's not for rental. That's for myself. No, no, no extra parking required. C, can the virus be ob obtained to allow parking on either Rothbrook and Rothon Street, waiving the three hour parking allowance? I don't think so, because kind of like there's a parking by law in the city, I, I don't want to change that, right? So. Thank you. I, I hope you have the power to. <laughs> yeah. yes. Thank you. I, I, I just thought it would be nice to have that on the record since the neighbors yeah wrote in and um, uh, I don't know if they're here to ask the questions themselves. So thank you for your presentation. Yeah, I've talked to her, by the way, I talked to her already. So she said, okay, my, uh, Michael, yeah. So uh, if I knew you, your plan, I won't write this because I did, she didn't knew that before, you know, I knocked the door, I explained to her and, and she, she's happy. She's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Very well, thank you for that explanation. Any other items of clarification or questions? Okay, I see none. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of this application, um, as well as taking into account the comments presented by Mr. Zhang this evening um, uh, and noting there was one letter of ob objection um, for which Mr. Zhang has addressed the concerns of the neighbor um, to the best of his ability. Uh, I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions, that the below grade stairs be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated July 21st, and that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision if the building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to Thank mention, you, sorry, that there was another letter. It would have come in your addendum. I believe it was from a Mr. Douglas Miller. Okay. I just want it noted that it, that that it was received even like we had the holiday yesterday, which was hard to get all the comments out, but I just, it was sent as a late addendum today. Yes, I did see that. Thank you. No, I just, um, in case Mr. Miller is watching, <laughs> I just want to make sure that they're aware that it did go to the committee members. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Miller isn't on the line to speak. Uh, no, he's not. Okay. And Mr. Miller asks, he's concerned. Um, whether or not um, there'll be a widening of the driveway. And that is not part of this application, to be clear. Yeah, there seem to be similar concerns as Mr. Mahoney. Thank you. So we've covered them and Mr. Zhang has addressed them all. Okay, uh, you can go ahead and continue your thought process on the motion. Um, you're still muted. Apologies to the Secretary Treasurer. Did you get that uh, uh, they requested conditions? Uh, no, I never. I did not hear those. Oh, okay. That the below grade stairs be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated July 2021, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. The application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Zhang. Thank you, members. Good night.
Okay. We have application CAV 026 of 2022 at 228 Tilford Road. Again, it's application CAV 026 of 2022 at 228 Tilford Road. If there's anyone who's interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call. Good evening. Go ahead, Mr. Demchak. Uh, good evening, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Paul Demchek uh, with Batori Management. I am the planning consultant uh, on behalf of the applicant for 228 uh, Tilford Road. I do have a brief presentation prepared. Okay, great. Um, so the subject property at uh, 228 Tilford Road uh, is currently occupied by an existing single story detached dwelling and the landowner seeks to improve the site with the construction of a new two story single detached dwelling. Uh, the adjacent uses to the surrounding site include residential detached dwellings, um, uh, as well as uh, some recently reconstructed dwellings of varying architectural styles, which I'll, I'll address in a minute. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so what you see before you here is the site plan uh, with the proposed um, uh, footprint and driveway location uh, for the application. So the driveway is intended to be um, consistent with the, the location of the current driveway on the property. And the, uh, the subject development um, includes a, um, obviously the, a, a footprint of the dwelling that's intended to be sited um, essentially identical to the neighboring properties uh, to the north and south of the subject site. Um, this includes um, um, all setbacks, um, the requirements for height, uh, lot coverage and dwelling depth, all being maintained in accordance with the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Um, I will address it in further detail in a moment, but just for the benefit of the committee, the only variance that is being sought this evening is the floor area ratio. Uh, while I've got the site plan up, um, I will note we have received some comments from um, uh, from neighbors uh, of the subject property uh, concerned about uh, siting of the dwelling, uh, potential overlook impacts, um, and privacy impacts. Um, as I've, I've mentioned, the siting of the dwelling is intended to be located um, ostensibly identical in terms of the dwelling depths that you see um, on the properties to the north and south of the subject site um, and, and similar setbacks. Uh, essentially what we're trying to do is create um, an identical rear yard condition um, that you see um, within the immediate context of the neighborhood. Um, just for the benefit of the committee, um, existing trees outside the property or outside of the dwelling footprint, sorry, are largely proposed to be maintained, uh, including all municipally owned trees as well as border trees surrounding the subject site. Uh, next slide, please. Um, What's being proposed is a, a modern uh, two-story building. Um, I will note, and I've got a couple of slides showing the adjacent properties in a moment, but I will note that there are other modern dwellings uh, within the neighborhood in the immediate context. And there is a variety of architecture st architectural styles uh, within this immediate neighborhood context. Next slide, please. This is the rear elevation. Next slide, please. And then just the uh, the two side elevations on the slide. Next slide, please. This is a rendering of the front elevation. Again, it's a modern um, architectural interpretation that's intended for the site. Next slide, please. Uh, so what you see here are the immediate um, neighbors um, on the south and north. So the, the picture on the Left is the uh, existing two-story home that's located to the south of the subject site. And the picture on the right of the screen is the adjacent property to the north of the subject site. Uh, these are relatively reconstructed uh, dwellings uh, that exist uh, beside the subject property. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, for the benefit of the committee, um, there is one variance being sought. It is for the floor area ratio, which is going from 29% to propose 33.07%. Um, just for the benefit of the committee, um, we have had discussions with staff um, in advance and uh, during the process of obviously our application being submitted 
Um, I will suggest we had, um, at least from my opinion, uh, some very respectful disagreements on the, on the proposal. Um, and I want to just walk the committee through um, just some of the thought process that went into some of that. Uh, next slide, please. So what's before the committee today? And I mean, we, for variances, I, I typically, typically don't get into the, uh, the floor plans uh, for the building, but I want to I highlight for the benefit of the committee a couple of items. So there, is, uh, there was comments from staff that spoke to um, the concerns about the numbers of open two belows uh, within the second floor. So essentially that's the cathedral ceilings that are proposed. And you can see here on the design, there are a number of open two belows um, within the second floor um, that go down to, uh, to, uh, to the first floor. My position to staff and, and what I've suggested and will continue to suggest for the benefit of the committee is that the open two belows actually provide uh, from my perspective an opportunity to reduce floor area. Um, and I'd like to take the committee to the next slide, please. So what I've shown here conceptually is a second floor plan with increased open two belows. So what we've done is essentially um, eliminated the master bedroom and some area, uh, including the master bathroom on the second floor. And we've shown a three bedroom layout. So what we're seeing here is um, reduced floor area, all internal to the proposed dwelling. And there's no impact or changes to the exterior of the building. So the setbacks stay the same, the built form stays the same, the height stays the same, and ostensibly the massing would stay identical. Um, there's no impact from the streetscape. And um, we would not be here this evening if this, for example, this floor area was proposed. So we are filling in, in theory, some of those cathedral ceilings to allocate for additional floor area for my client and his desires for his family. Next slide, please. So I just have some notes here. Um, so while the proposed dwelling is a modern architectural interpretation uh, within the immediate neighborhood, um, the architecture and proportions of the dwelling um, have been considered to provide essentially breaks, and in my opinion, an appropriate scale to ensure compatibility within the streetscape. Um, so the proposed building incorporates a front porch element, um, windows and various architectural uh, features and, and color palettes to break up the massing. Um, and these, uh, this type of, uh, of breaks are also found within the context of the immediate neighborhood. Uh, my client is proposing high quality architectural materials and designs. Um, and again, I, I will note that the proposed dwelling maintains all other requirements, the bylaw coverage, height, all setbacks and dwelling depth uh, to essentially mirror what you see uh, within that immediate uh, lot fabric. Um, I, I submitted a planning justification brief as well for the benefit of the committee. Um, and in my opinion, it does meet the requirements specifically of section 321 of the Oakville uh, design guidelines for uh, stable residential communities. Next slide, please. Um, so just in brief summary, um, in my opinion, the, um, um, the property can accommodate for the variance for increased, increased floor area without any adverse impact on adjacent or nearby properties and, and will fit in the character of the neighborhood. Um, and in my opinion, the proposed uh, application does meet the four tests uh, for minor variance. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, and I'm before the committee and would be happy to assist and answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Demchuk. Any questions or items of clarifications at this time? Go ahead, Mr. Towski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Demchuk, since you opened the door to theoretical designs, um, you know, I, your argument is if you redesigned the house and took out the master bedroom, you wouldn't need a variance, but that's not what you're applying for, is it? And would it not equally be fair to then ask you if you eliminated the open to below areas and shrunk the second floor, you could come up with a design that is more compatible and attempts to mitigate the increased size that you're seeking? So through you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you for the question. Um, it, it's a good thought in terms of like the conceptual, there's obviously a number of different ways to, to break up massing and um, and look at how we can design a building. 
my thought process related to this is that there's a number of tools in, I'll call it the, the zoning bylaw toolbox um, to allow for, or to try to mitigate impacts in terms of massing and design. Uh, floor space index is, is one of them. Um, and I, I just wanted to show that second slide of the conceptual floor area for the benefit of the committee and saying that it can be done with, in theory, no exterior changes or massing impacts. Like what you see from the exterior streetscape perspective or even rear yard or side yard conditions could in theory exist um, without any, any impacts. And, and my suggestion before the committee is that that increase in floor area is all internal to the dwelling and it doesn't have any impact on the actual streetscape. Thank you. Any other questions or items of clarification? Mr. Flemington. Sorry, uh, Madam Chair, I had noted in the staff report they had made comments with regards to the uh, window wells and the zoning by bylaws. I was just wondering if they could comment on, uh, you know, whether that complies or not. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, I have spoken to my client and the architect on that. It is the intent that the proposed window wells would comply with the requirements of the zoning bylaw and no variance is being sought for those. So if there, if I'm being candid, if there is like an error or the design of that window wells is incorrect, it will be modified to ensure compliance with the zoning bylaw. Uh, sorry, my question was to staff. Oh, I, my apologies. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I, I believe that he's responded in terms of whether they would comply or not, because I think in the report we said that we were it needed to be looked into whether they complied. So if he were to comply with those, that would satisfy that specific comment related to the window wells. So thank you. Any other questions or items of clarification? Do we have anyone standing by that would like to speak to the application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, very well. If uh, we're ready, I'm happy to take a motion. Mr. Flemington, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I uh, thank the applicant for their uh, uh, written submission as well as the oral presentation this evening, uh, but I do share the comments that uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Tilowski shared, and uh, I'm not uh, in uh, support of this application as applied for. I do want to note that the town staff written report is not in support of it either, as well as there's uh, two letters in opposition of this application. Um, I do think that uh, the applicant can do a few things to mitigate uh, the uh, application that's been applied for. So I am not, uh, I am moving a motion that the application as applied for uh, be denied, finding that it does not meet the four tests of the Planning Act and that it's not minor in nature. Okay, thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. Uh, all those in support of the application being denied? Okay, sorry, your application has been denied, none opposed. Moving on to application CAV, 027 of 2022 at 187 Dean Avenue. Again, it's application CAV 027 of 2022 at 187 Dean Avenue. Good evening. Can I, can I just- Ms. Bruce? I'm, I'm sorry yes, to interrupt. Go ahead, Ms. McRae. Just one moment.
sorry, um, sorry to interrupt. It was just on the last application for Tilford. Um, yes. One of the, the, the uh, letters in opposition, I just wanted to confirm that um, it was the one I believe from Julie and Dave, that their letter was received by the committee. They're just, they're calling in to say it wasn't referred to. Um, so I just want to make sure that they are aware that their comment was received. Um, yes, uh, in reference to that, I did uh, note that there were two letters of opposition. One was from John Lindstead and the other one was from Julie and Dave Oliwick. Oh, thank you. And, and it's just, we do not read out the letters of objection. Um, I just want that noted. Um, so again, we take I, them into consideration. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. I just wanted to, to um, make it aware. And I know now we're on the next application, but I just wanted it um, confirmed that um, we did receive that. Thank you very much. Sorry, we can go on to the next. Sorry for the interruption, Ms. Bruce. Just give me one moment. Um, we're back on application CAV 026 of 2022. I was just uh, reviewing the notes for the previous application when we had that uh, uh, question from the, um, the neighbors who provided the letters of opposition. Um, thank you for your patience. Go ahead, Ms. Bruce. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of committee. Uh, my colleague, Lindsay Bruce, is actually unable to attend tonight's meeting, so I am stepping in her place. My name is Ava Barnett, and I'm also with F SMPL Design Studio 15 Colburn Street in Hamilton, and we're the agent acting on behalf of the property owner at 187 Dean Avenue. I do have a short presentation that I'm happy to walk through just for context on the four requested variances. So if we can go to the next slide, please. 187 Dean Avenue currently has a single detached dwelling on the lot. It's zoned residential RL5. Next slide, please. The existing dwelling is proposed to be renovated with a second story addition and attached garage, along with removal of the existing recessed detached garage. Next slide, please. So four variances are requested. The relief requested in variance one is to the westerly interior side yard, which will accommodate the existing building location. This deficiency, as you can see, is minimized to the rear of the building. Variance two seeks to permit a reduced rear yard setback, and this is due to lot geometry and really only affects the southwest corner of the proposed covered patio. Next slide, please. Variance three is to the front yard setback and is also due to lot geometry. This modest reduction only affects the northeast corner of the proposed covered porch. And lastly, variance four. This is to permit a building height increase from nine meters to 9.24 meters, which will facilitate the overall building design. Next slide, please. Relief from these zoning provisions is considered minor in nature and maintains the overall purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw. This relief will facilitate the site plan while accommodating the existing building location and orientation and will yield a desirable built form. I will note that we also did receive positive staff report and no comments in opposition. And I'd be happy to take any questions from the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Ms. Barnett at this time? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And through you uh, to the applicant, uh, the, uh, this is a, an addition onto an existing dwelling. Do I understand this correctly? Um, what, what portions of the building will be retained? I note that you're, you're uh, increasing the height of the, um, foundation walls. So the 
through you, uh, Chair, Madam Chair, the first floor will be retained and the addition is built off of the existing first floor with the second floor addition and then attached garage on the side. The, do, when I read the, reviewed the uh, elevation drawings, I noted that the finished floor elevation increases. This is using the, uh, the existing location of the building mm -hmm. and then building up, but it is a full renovation. Um, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Is there anyone uh, standing by that would like to speak to this application? Uh, there is no one at this time. Very well. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Zowski. I didn't see your hand. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a little blurred in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Chair, I find this to be a very uh, considerate and compatible uh, renovation addition to an existing small dwelling in a neighborhood with a number of small dwellings. Um, I don't believe there's going to be any impact um, from the variances being requested um, outside of the, the building height, which really goes to a peak only um, I think the rest of the variances are minor in nature. And I'd note that there's no opposition from the community um, with respect to this variance. So I believe it meets the four tests of the Planning Act and I would uh, move its approval subject to the dwelling being constructed in general accordance with the site plan and elevation drawings dated January 14th, 2022 and that uh, building permit issue within two years. Thank you, Mr. Tulowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Barnett. I'm just going to make a comment with respect to uh, letters that are sent in, whether they are in support or in opposition. Um, we don't read them into a record per se, but we do make mention of their presence and we do receive them and we do read them and take them into consideration. Um, for those uh, neighbors that are in opposition, I understand that they may sometimes have questions or items of clarification. And um, when an application is denied, you will get another chance to look at a new application and at that time you can reassess your concerns. Um, I hope that has helped anyone who's been in audience and waiting to um, attend uh, whether a previous application or an upcoming application. Thank you. Um, we are moving on to application CAV 028 of 2022 at 1067 Cedar Grove Boulevard. Again, it's application 28 of 2022 at 1067 Cedar Grove Boulevard. I see Mr. Hicks has already joined us. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I do have a brief presentation if we can uh, put it up on the screen and go to, uh, to that. Um, Wait for that to come up. So this is a new home being built on uh, Cedar Grove. And if we go to the second page, there are four variances that we are requiring. I'll look at them on the site plan in the next slide after this, but there's basically one for a swimming pool location, a flankage yard, uh, residential floor area and lot coverage. So if we go to the site plan, I'll just try and explain the reasons for those. So on this site plan, uh, I don't know if you can blow that up slightly uh, from your side, but um, the pool is the first one. Because it's a flanking yard, we have the pool has to be set back from that flanking yard at a distance of 3.5 meters. 
we're trying to save some trees that are on the right side of that uh, property. So we've moved it closer. There is a fence in between that and the street. So it's really not visible to the street. So it's a fairly a very minor variance in that case. In the flanking side yard, the existing house is about 3.95 meters on one side and 4.14 on the other side. We've basically sited the new house where the existing house is. We've met the front yard setbacks. We've increased the side yard to 4.2 on the right side to uh, try and make sure that we've respected the distance in between the houses. But we have uh, slightly reduced the flanking side yard setback to 3.76 meters from 5 point or 4.2 meters. As I say, that's a difference of about eight inches or 0.2 meters from where the existing house is. So again, appears to be fairly minor. The um, Growth floor area to lot ratio, 37%. We're proposing 38.37%. What we've felt to be fairly minor, it's a, it's a smaller lot. Lot coverage, uh, the small red area that's, that's uh, uh, noted on that site plan represents the increased coverage, which relates to an open covered porch at the back of the uh, property. Trying to preserve all the trees. There is one existing tree uh, that's obviously in the middle of the house that has to come down. Planning had raised and zoning had raised an issue with a potential variance related to the driveway. Uh, we've, we found a solution to that, but now there's a concern with an existing hydro pole. So uh, we're satisfied that we're going to be able to uh, satisfy that. So we do not need a variance for the driveway and certainly prepared to proceed on that basis. We have met with uh, most of the neighbors as we always do. We submit separate packages to the neighbors with the drawings, ask them to contact us. And uh, there are two letters of support in there. There's one other letter that didn't make its way in there. So it's irrelevant, I guess, but Mr. Platt who's on Cedar Grove uh, also called me to support that application, but he was out of town. And I believe that in our working with planning that uh, there were some concerns at the beginning and I think we resolved all of those. And I uh, thank you. Uh, for your uh, discussions and uh, cooperation in doing that. And I think planning's in support of the application as well. Uh, we think it does meet all the four tests. We think it is minor. It will be a great addition to the neighborhood. And it is a neighborhood that is in transition. And certainly this house is compatible with what we see happening in the neighborhood itself. <clears throat> with that, I will uh, leave it open to members' uh, questions if you'd like. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hicks. Are there any thank questions or items of clarification at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, if there's no one standing by to speak to the application, we can take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report, which is in support of the application, um, and having heard um, Mr. Hicks' presentation, I'm satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, uh, subject to three conditions, um, those noted by staff, those being that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and elevation drawings dated uh, January 19th, 2022. That the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. And that the owner satisfy Oakville Hydro with respect to the relocation and or removal of the hydro pole as necessary. Um, I would note that there were uh, two letters um, received um, in support of the application. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? See none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Have a good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are moving on to application CAV. 029 of 2022 at 417 Englehart Street South. Again, it's application CAV 029 of 2022 at 417 Englehart Street South. 
And I believe that's Mr. Burrell again. Yes, go ahead, sir. Based on earlier four four eleven decision, I'd like to defer this one. Okay, and you're aware that there is a deferral fee. That's why we don't want to do the first thing because it's quite steep. That's on about three dollars. Yeah. Um, I. You'll have to see the secretary treasurer for another date. Um, when you're when you're ready but um members i'm in your hands um, all those in support of a deferral to allow mr tomas to go back and rework this application okay um your application has been deferred Thank you. all right um So we are on the last item of our agenda is application CV 030 of 2022 at 284 Southview Road. Again, it's application CV 030 of 2022 at 284 Southview Road. Okay, good evening everyone, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Mark Rosa. I'm from Kieran Design here at 11 Bronte Road, Unit 31, also called L6L0E1. And I'm the authorized agent on behalf of the property owners at 284 Southview Road. We're seeking relief on the following three zoning bylaws. The first one being the garage area where the where the maximum allowed in our zone is 45 square meters. And we are proposing a garage area of 53.5 square meters. The next variance is the residential floor area where the maximum allowed is 40%. And we are proposing an RFA of 43.75%, uh, which is about a 29.5 square meters overage. And the third variance is a maximum lot coverage and our allowed is 35% and we are proposing a 35.5 lot percent lot coverage. And I just want to note that planning staff is in support of all three of our variances. So um, the first slide here, uh, we'll go for the first variance, uh, which is the garage variance. Uh, essentially the additional space will be used for seasonal equipment such uh, such as a lawnmower or a snowblower. The RFA variance can be attributed to a total um, combined area of the server and pantry combination, as well as a larger living room at the front there and a floor area for uh, to accommodate the elevator on, on both first and second floor. And the third variance uh, is for the lot coverage, which is only, which we only have a small overage of 0.5% and is due to the rear cover porch at the back. And can we move to slide two, please? And in addition to the uh, spaces on the first floor, uh, the, the client also wanted to have a separate laundry room as opposed to having it combined with the mudroom on the first floor. And this area is about 7.5 square meters. So essentially, if we are to sum up the areas uh, listed on the main floor and the laundry room on the second floor, it will, uh, it'll, the combined area will sum up to the uh, overage on the RFA requested. Uh, slide three, please. So the rooms mentioned in the RFA variance will not affect the, the front elevation. For example, if we were to remove the pantry and the server space along with the elevator, we will not, it will not alter the front elevation as they're located more to the center of the proposed home. If we were to reduce the living room, it would be along the depth direction since we comply with the side yard setbacks and a wider frontage is more desirable. To further break up the overall massing, 
we designed the new home to have a different roof heights, which do not allow the second floor footprint uh, to align directly with the larger first floor foot footprint. On slide four, please. So uh, we received a comment from uh, in the, from the neighbor regarding the trees. Then, essentially, uh, it's about the mature trees on the property. So uh, throughout the design process, we try to keep in mind the preservation of trees, especially in mature ones, although sometimes it is difficult to do so. Unfortunately, uh, oh sorry, the, the trees in, questions, in question are the, the private tree there, uh, the private trees by the proposed garage. So the, the comment that came in noted that it was a a shared tree. However, it's been confirmed through the an updated topographical survey that these trees are private trees. So they belong to, to our client's lot at 284 South View. Um, unfortunately, these trees will have to be removed due to the footprint of the new home. Um, through the DSP process and the guidelines, we'll be required to plant replace, replacement trees uh, for the ones uh, being removed and we are anticipating to replant at least eight new trees. Um, the trees at the rear of the property are also private trees, two of which are in poor condition, uh, which will be confirmed through an arbor support. And the hedge along the, along the west southwest side of the property um, will also be retained. And I hope this answers all my questions. Oh, sorry, answers the question regarding the trees. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Croza. Um, are there any questions or items of clarifications at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, who would like to, uh, if there's no one, here that's like to speak to the application. Um, if the secretary anybody treasurer would like to speak to the application, they would have to raise their hand and then I can move them into the meeting. I don't see anyone at this time. Okay, very well. Thank you. Um, who would like to move a motion? Okay, go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as, the, as uh, the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of uh, these minor variances, having also taken into account the comments presented by the applicant, as well as um, I do understand that there is one letter um, uh, concerning the three to four mature large trees um, uh, that was in question. Uh, is the applicant aware of that letter from Mr. Sharp? He just answered yes. the, the concerns of the letter. Right. Okay. So they've been answered uh, sufficiently. Um, so I'm satisfied that the minor application meets all four tests under the Planning Act and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application subject to the following conditions. And those conditions are such that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations drawings dated January 11th, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you. Okay, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, have a good Thank night. Thank you, good night. We have minutes to confirm for February the 8th. Mr. Flemington, thank you for moving the minutes and motion to adjourn. Ms. Murray, thank you, motion to adjourn. 
at, I don't see the time, 8.50. Madam Secretary Treasurer, will you let us know when we're offline? 